All right, now that we've covered how to get things into Nuke, let's talk about how to get them out. So there are a couple different things that we can get out of Nuke. In this chapter, we're just gonna talk about images and how we actually export finished images. You can also get things out like tracking data, ASCII data, cameras, FBXs. There's some other 3D objects you can export. But for this session, we're just gonna talk about images. So the, the main way to get an image out of Nuke is to use the right node. The right node can be accessed via the image menu or you can use the hotkey W. That'll pull up a node. And as you can see in the property bin over here, we have some options that start with channels, the file, and this is the same as a read node. So this, is, this wants a path and the file name. It's also important to remember that you want to properly name your file depending on what type of image it's gonna be, whether it's a movie or an image sequence or a still frame. Proxy, if you want to output proxies, you can also set a file path for that. Just like on a read node, you have the frame option where you can set a start at, offset, or expression. This can be useful if you're using, you know, a, a image sequence that goes into the negative numbers to start and you want to offset the naming of it. This applies to how it's named. Color space. This is important, and again, we'll cover this more in the color space chapter. Um, Typically, if you're writing out full full image quality, full res for delivery images, I like to follow the convention of same same, where whatever my color space is of my read node, I match that color space on my write node. If you do that, then however your source came in, and even if you improperly linearize the file, if you write it back out into the same color space, Typically, it will look correct on the other end, even if something happened in between that wasn't technically correct. Something to note with a couple of these color spaces is they do clip at the top and the bottom. So that is something to be aware of if you're, if you're worried about your color space not being correct. You can also take a couple other options relative to color space, whether you're pre-multiplying it. That is, if you want it to appear transparent um, in other applications or inside of Nuke later when you read it back in. Raw data just does exactly what it says. If you are working in stereo or some other, uh, some other world where you're using views, you can select which views you're actually writing out to that write node. And then lastly is file type. So file type will automatically fill in when you put in input your file info. So if you name it .jpeg as soon as you click enter or click out of that, it will automatically set this to .jpg and bring in default settings. Create directories. This is really nice sometimes. Also, it can be dangerous if you have a typo or if you have something pointed somewhere you don't want it. If you go to render a file and the folder structure doesn't exist, Nuke will throw an error. If you tick this box, Nuke will just create the folders to get to where you told it to go. Render order. This is relative to the actual order that your write nodes will work if you have multiple write nodes and you're rendering them at the same time. There are cases where you might have a pre-comp file and that you have a write node writing out a pre-comp, which is a you know basically baking some subset of your comp into an image. And then you're reading that pre-comped image back in and using it somewhere down the line. This might be important if you're doing doing stuff like that where you need something to render before something else. Frame range, that's exactly what it sounds like. There are cases, especially if you're working with asset grooming or some other you know, sort of non-traditional things where you want your write node to only write a specific number of frames. So you can use frame range to actually limit the range of where that write node will effectively render. And what's really nice about that is you can actually render a much larger chunk so if you have four different write nodes that are all rendering either overlapping or different frame ranges, you can use that frame range limit to render all your write nodes at the same time over the full extent of all of their ranges. And it won't throw an error when you run out of range or run out of input on one write node or the other. Read file, this is handy if you wanna quickly just reference the file path and make it a read. So that way it'll cache from the written image instead of trying to render your node tree. 
missing frames. This is the same as how it works in a read node. Once you take that box, these will become available and then you can, it gives you error handling um, for that read node.